So you just got Cyberpunk, or you're trying it out after all the updates, and you want to know how to build a character to not only survive in this world, but to thrive. Well, here are my top tips for you. A lot of these tips are going to be catering to the hardest difficulty of the game. However, I would say for your first playthrough, I would highly recommend just playing on normal. I think that this game has such an engaging and interesting story, and until you fall in love with the gameplay, setting it to very hard doesn't make a lot of sense. Very hard turns a lot of enemies into just these bullet sponges, which can be a little annoying if you don't already enjoy it. Now, after choosing difficulty, you go through the character creator and into the attribute point distribution. My highest recommendation is to focus on three trees at the beginning and potentially four is pushing it for me, but there are situations like my gunslinger build where four trees ended up working really well for me. Making the decisions on the attributes depends on what weapons you wanna use and the type of gameplay you wanna have. My one and only recommendation is technical ability. I think technical ability is one of the most important attribute trees in the entire game. We'll get more into that later. Another thing to pay attention to with your attributes is what it's affecting on your character. For instance, reflexes is increasing your crit chance, but also one of my favorite things, it increases movement speed, which is a lot of fun. Body also increases your health and stamina, so on and so forth. After just starting the game, getting through the early on stuff, and finally being released back into the open world, I would say focus on two main skill trees, for instance, handguns and ninjutsu. If you distribute your perk points too wide in the early game, it's going to be hard to get enough damage out of the guns you have, especially on the hardest difficulty. One comment I do want to make about this is don't rely too much on your weapon of choice. For example, in this katana build that I was working on, the amount of swings it took me at the start of the game to kill someone with a katana just wasn't worth it. So using the best gun you can find in the early game, regardless of your build, is how you're going to get through the beginning. I'd say from levels 1 all the way to 20 is where you're maybe not going to quite see your build coming to light yet. It's where you're just going to have to use the best gun you can find on the ground, you're going to have to wear dumb armor and look like an idiot, and just get through the early levels. Just like any RPG, it takes a lot of grinding to make a build work correctly. It's between levels 20 to level 30 where your build will start to shine. Now, I want to dive a little bit into street cred and the importance of it. Street cred is a secondary leveling system within the game that can be easily leveled up just by doing an assault in progress or the gigs with fixers. You can easily max out your street cred way before you ever even break level 30. Street cred is massively important because of the street cred rewards. At each of these stages and levels is when you unlock different gear to purchase at different types of vendors. I'd say the two most important to me is level 20 and level 50, both having to do with Ripper Docs unlocking more of their gear. Another important one is at level 27, you unlock all the clothing in vendors, which allows you to purchase legendary armor. I was able to do this as early as level 17 with my Netrunner build to put full legendary armor on her, allowing her to take a lot more damage. So street cred is vitally important to pay attention to and the tiers that come along with it. Now you're getting to the sweet spot between levels 30 and 50. By this time, you've probably gotten your street cred up to level 50, and all the weapons and mods and things in the game are becoming available to you. I think the most important thing to make a build not only survive, but also kill really well is with mods. It isn't until you're in the upper 30s and 40s that you'll start to see some of these mods show up at vendors. In my current opinion, there's only five mods you need to care about and need to get. First off is a mod that's restricted only to face headwear, and that is Bully and Deadeye. Bully increases crit damage by 8, whereas Deadeye increases it by 6, but also adds a 15% headshot damage multiplier. To me, I'd probably say Deadeye is better across the board. However, if you're not locking headshots, Bully might be the better choice. Next is the Armadillo mod. Now this is kind of a tricky one because you have to have the crafting spec if you want to find it. I've searched through all the vendors in Night City and refreshed their libraries and I've never found a legendary Armadillo mod in the store. The only way I've ever been able to find them is by finding a crafting spec so I can craft as many as I need for whatever purpose. Now the Armadillo mod is a hard find and since 1.5 was released, they actually changed the location 
of the crafting spec for this mod. I dug through a lot of forums to try and find information of where these are. However, thanks to a comment in one of my videos, I was able to find a consistent location to find a legendary tier armadillo crafting mod. It can be found at this wraith camp here after helping Pan Am with a mission here. Now, I want to emphasize, wait till it's legendary. Do not grab this too early, otherwise you're going to be stuck with a lower tier. For example, my Netrunner build right now is only a level 29, and she's only finding it at a rare blue tier. However, both my level 50 characters, it is a legendary tier. So wait till it's legendary to grab it. The last two mods I'd recommend are Crunch and Pacifier. Pacifier increases crit damage by 7% and Crunch increases damage by 7%. I found in my testing Crunch usually tends to do more damage, but there might be a situation where your crit damage might stack and do more. Now, both of these mods crafting specs can be purchased from this vendor at Canary Plaza. However, you do have to be a high enough level for them to show up as legendary. Now I'm sure you're noticing with all these mods that a majority of them you're finding them as crafting specs. And I think this further emphasizes the idea of investing into technical ability to make sure you have the edge runner artisan to craft legendary items. This is massively important not only to get all the mods you want to make sure you can put out the damage you want to put out, but also because most iconic guns that you find you will find at either a blue or purple tier. And the only way to get them to an orange legendary tier is through crafting. And nothing sucks more than finding a really cool iconic gun that gets outclassed by something you found on the ground because you can't craft it to legendary tier. That's a come I'm a firm believer that no matter what build you create, getting technical ability to level 18 is a must. Now let's dive into cyberware. Again, until you hit street credit level 50, you won't have access to a lot of the really good cyberware that's gonna make your character perform the best. Now, because cyberware is a deep hole that would need a full video in itself, I'm just gonna highlight the couple that I think are an absolute must that have no class requirements to make them work. My first recommendation is to get double jump. I can't tell you how many missions I've done by jumping into an upper floor window, grabbing the item, and then just stepping out and beating the mission. Double jump truly changes the way I play this game and I would never go without it. Next, I'd say go for the Optics Mark III simply because you get three slots and these help a lot with increasing headshot damage with trajectory analysis, but also like threat detectors. So you see enemies that have detected you. It's really nice when you're in a tight situation to know where the enemies are located. And lastly, one that any character can get, which absolutely breaks the game, is the optical camo. Optical camo is broken. You can literally stand right in front of people and they will never see you. You could assassinate someone right in front of their friend and that friend won't notice until their body hits the ground. Optical camo is the most broken and one of my all time favorite cyberwares. Also, I'd recommend getting the subdermal armor, just an extra 300 armor, it's really handy to have, as well as the skeleton to increase your max health. As for everything else, it's pretty build specific, so it depends on what you're trying to do. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. My top tips for how to not only survive in this game, but how to dominate in the late game. If you have any further questions or concerns, I'll be down in the comments and do my best to answer any further question you have. If you'd like to see a deep dive into a couple of my builds, I have a couple on my channel and I'm working on another one right now. So make sure to be subscribed if you wanna see that content. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.